some sense. <laughs> Hey everybody and welcome to the 29th edition of 2 Minute Photoshop Tricks. I'm Ken Conklin and today we're taking a look at workspaces. As always, we're going to cruise through these tricks fairly quickly, so feel free to pause or rewind the podcast if we're going too fast. And remember, always work on a copy of the image, not the original. Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at how to manage your workspace inside Photoshop and how to navigate within your image as you edit. Arguably the most important part of your Photoshop workspace, besides the actual image, will be your palettes. Photoshop defaults to having about 11 palettes open docked into four palette windows. Now these default settings are great for general purpose editing, but part of the power in palettes is their customizability. Each palette window can house any number of palette tabs and you can drag any palette tab to any other palette window. This tab organizing allows you to keep all the palettes that you use often open and visible while other less used palettes can be docked behind your more used palettes. So for example, Say you use the Layers palette all the time, but hardly ever use the History palette. You can simply click on the History palette tab at the top of its palette window that says History and drag it to the Layer palette window. Then when you let go, your History palette will be docked with your Layers palette, and each one can be visible only when you click on its tab. Once you have your palettes set up the way you like them, go to the Window menu in Photoshop and select the Workspace submenu. Then select the Save Workspace option. This will allow you to save all your palette locations so that you can quickly reset your palettes to your preferred locations anytime you want. This is particularly handy since you can save many different workspace configurations. So you can have a different workspace for all the kinds of editing you do. For example, you could have different workspaces saved for working on images for the web, color correcting images, or getting images ready for print. After you've saved your workspace, you can quickly load any saved workspace by simply going to the Window menu, then the Workspace submenu, then select the name of the workspace you saved. You can also reset your palettes to the default settings in the Workspace submenu by selecting the Default Workspace option. Sometimes all those palettes can be a little too much when you're trying to focus on just your image. So Photoshop has a couple of quick ways of getting those palettes out of the way when you don't need them. First, you can quickly collapse any set of palettes by simply double-clicking on its name on the palette tab at the top. Double clicking on the collapse tab will expand it back to the original size and location. Next you can quickly hide all of Photoshop's palettes by simply hitting the tab key on your keyboard. Hitting the tab key again will bring all of them back just as they were. Palettes are really only half the battle when you're working on an image. The other half is navigating within your image while you edit. For precision editing in an image, you almost always need to zoom in on your image. And since you zoom in and out on your image a lot, Photoshop has built in a couple of quick ways of doing it. First, you can quickly zoom in and out of your image by holding the Command key on the keyboard if you're using a Mac, or the Control key on a PC then pushing either the plus or minus key on your keyboard. The plus key will zoom your image in, while the minus key will zoom it out. You can also quickly zoom by holding down the option key on a Mac, 
or the alt key on a PC, then scrolling your mouse wheel if you have one. Once you're zoomed into your image, you can quickly pan around your image simply by holding down the space bar on your keyboard. Then click and drag with your mouse. This is handy for moving within your image while you're zoomed in. But what if you want to see your image zoomed in to see some detail and see an overview of your image at the same time? Well, Photoshop makes this easy by allowing you to have your image file open in two different windows at the same time. To have two views of the same image, simply make sure you have an image open in Photoshop, then go to the Window menu and select the Arrange submenu. Then select the New Window for and then the name of your image option. A new window of your image should open up and you can now zoom in on one window while the other window stays the same. All the edits that you make in either window will show up on the other, giving you a great view of how your image looks both whole and close up. Okay, that's it for this week's show, but make sure to tune in next week for another good one. Also, stop by our website to see step-by-step -step guides for some of our tricks and our user wiki. If you have a question about Photoshop or a comment about the show, you can send me an email at kent at twominutetricks.com or you can leave us a voicemail at 310-928-3214. Or you can Skype us for free by sending a Skype to kent.conklin. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.